Hello everyone, this is Diane and welcome to my messy desk. I've been working very hard on these. They're kind of um, shabby chic boho journals. Uh, I don't know what I'm calling them yet, but I'm having a lot of fun with them. So I've done a lot today um, in preparation for this video. I've done all the stenciling I'm going to do and I've done all of the sewing, I think. I've done all the sewing that I need to do. So we can just sit here at this part of my table and do some gluing and stamping and choosing of ephemera, inserting ephemera and all the fun stuff. So without any further ado, let's get started. I do want to let you know that this journal was reserved and so I will only reserve one out of the pair. So this one is reserved and this one is what will be in my shop and I'm hoping they will be ready on Sunday and I will do the flip through in the morning and have it scheduled later in the day but all that information will be in the flip through video so we're going to work on this one as you can see I took a piece of this really thin material and just sewed it on there, ruffled it up and sewed it on there. It had a little bit of a hem piece here, so I just left that up there so it can stick out the top. Uh, I am going to add something to this page. So I have this little booklet. It was um, the receipt part of checks, so that the check part is removed. And this is from 1870 from um, Biles, if you Jacob Biles, if you remember um, that um, cigar box that I showed you recently with the uh, little partitions in it, and I was putting little ephemera in it. That came from Jacob Biles, and he had all his little receipts folded up real tiny and fit into those little partitions. So these little receipt pieces are from the 1870s. So I'm going to just glue one right here so you can, it'll be the first page in your journal so you can maybe make a note about the journal. Sometimes when I start a new journal I will just write a little note about where I am in life, you know. Like when my kids were young I would have put how old they were and what my husband and I were doing as far as work and things like that. Just where we were in life. Or if this is for a special occasion journal, you could put that information on. Whatever you wanted to do on this very first page. And then I have this little tag that I just got from an Etsy seller. She is um, Creative Cafe Girl. Susie and I just got this yesterday with some other items and you'll see some of them in this little journal But this is one of the tags and it's stamped with a number. It, it's not I don't think it's metal around there I don't think I think it's vintage, but I don't know Anyway, I put the bulb pin on it and it the numbers aren't stamped so that they're right side up With the hole. They're just stamped there wherever so I'm just going to pin this to this ruffle. I'm adding all kinds of stuff. There's lots of vintage pieces in here. And maybe, maybe I'll put this a little higher up. And a lot of really special laces and jeweled pieces embroidered pieces that are really special. So there's that. And I'm going to stamp on that page. I didn't clip anything into the book as I was prepping like I do sometimes. I'll paper clip things to the page where they're going to go, but I just have things kind of lined up here. Hopefully I'll be able to find everything. This is archival ink from Ranger Coffee is the name of the color. 
and I notice my pad is coming out. It's like it's not lined up right. This is an old stamp that I haven't used in a long time. This old set of kind of corners and borders with florals and vines. <clears throat> it's very pretty. I used to use it a lot. And while I have this page out, I'm going to stamp another image from the same set on this side. I hope that the lace won't affect it. I have some lace on the other side. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Where'd my book go? Oh, it's over here. Um, I think I'm done with that page. And then we have a book page. Um, on this page. This is a digital. This one happens to be from Amity Bloom. And I'm going to put a valentine on this page. An antique valentine. I want one that will fit over the top. And it has a picture on both sides. I'll go with that one. And I just need a paper clip. I've already stenciled on the inside, on the white part, and I sewed a little piece of lace. And this is a stamp that came with my one of my um, Sam Pool sets. So I just stamped that and cut it out and sewed it there. And I think that's it for that page. Yes, that's it for that page. So that was pretty easy because I already did some of it. Now you can see that I have used this beautiful embroidered, it's like a sheer ribbon with all this gorgeous embroidery on it. And I had a large enough piece that I could sew this onto all three journals. They all got the same piece. So I hope you're impressed that I'm using up this. I love it. I, I think I have a small section of it left. So I've already sewn it on there and then I sewed a line here to divide it because it would be hard to have something stay in that pocket. It's not it's not centered so this one is bigger than that one and I'm going to put I didn't do that on purpose it didn't really matter to me um, but I do want to put an old photograph and I like these little ones with the these little black pieces are just parts of the of the um, photo holders. I've never seen them like that except for in this album um, so I like, see I put it in this other journal, and I like the way the black looks there. So I wanted to have at least some of them that have part of the black. Sometimes it just falls off while I'm doing, yeah, like that. I don't want to glue it on in case you don't want to leave it. So I'll tuck that in there. Oh, this is a... I guess I will glue it on. This is the shorter part. And I'll just take this lady here and put her up here. On this page, I have a few things to glue. I wanted to use this. This is another item that I got from Susie. 
at Creative Cafe. She only had the one. Um, it was in a box of de-stash stuff that she was getting rid of. So I ordered a box of stuff from her. Um, some of it I'm keeping. This is what I really wanted. I had seen someone using this on a video very recently, and I tried to find it on on eBay, and I couldn't find it. I wasn't really sure what to call it. She said she thought it was some kind of a craft paper measuring tape. It's not tape, but it's just thin. And I just, it's vintage, and I love it. So I then saw this video from Creative Cafe Girl, who I haven't watched in a long time. For some reason, I saw was re-watching one of her old videos, and then I checked her channel out to see if she was still active, and I found these uh, the, a video from like a week ago where she was de-stashing stuff, and I just watched the de-stash, and I saw that. So I went, and I couldn't believe it was still there. That box was still there after a week, so I bought it, and then I added these to my order and some tags that you'll see in a little bit. I'll link her shop below. She does she makes really cute things. So this is just a scrap of dyed paper that I had in my stash. Let's see. I guess I want that side to show. And I just wanted to embellish this plain page, but still leave space for writing. This is a pretty well embellished journal, but I left space for writing. And I just wanted to put a little strip of this. I want to have two numbers showing. They're spaced out pretty good. I just thought this was a really cute accent. I can't remember who I saw using it. It might have been Rachel for Roxy Creations, but I don't know. It might have been somebody else. And then I want to use a vintage gift tag for um, yeah, I, I do have some out for a little accent. So I love these things. I hoard them, but I'm using them now. I mean, I have used them quite a bit, but I don't use them often. I think I like that one. Or, I think I'll use the kitten, just because it's so darn cute. And it has the blue. I'm going to do a little more stamping on this side. And this time I'm using one of Lorna Taylor's stamps um, from Taylor Made Journals. She does not have these in her shop. She usually does, a sh she makes these stamps. And I've talked about them before, but she will show them on her, on Facebook, usually on Junk Journal Junkies or I don't even know. I bought enough of the stamps that she sends me a message to let me know when a new one is available. I barely looked at the last one she sent me because I didn't want to want it. <laughs> Every time I look at one of her sets, I want it. And I just thought, I, I need to pass on one. I passed on the Christmas one because I already had a, a pair, a set of Christmas ones from her. And I don't use them that often. But normally, I like to buy the ones that she sells. So, I want to make sure I'm using them. 
Isn't that pretty? And I wanted to put something vintage up here. Trying to find a little bag of stuff that I had. On the first one that I did, I had one of these pieces that came off of one of the antique calling cards, so I glued that on it. I don't want to just rip one off, but I thought that was really pretty, just a nice delicate piece up there. I don't think I have any more. These are really, these are in good shape. Yeah, I am going to put one of these in the journal. These are all just digitals. Okay, so I may find something later to put up here. Let's move on. On this page, I just want to give you a vintage piece um, like this. Um, this is also from Jacob Biles and this is 1888 and it's a pretty fragile uh, receipt. You can see it's a little bit torn. This was all folded up like that, tucked into that cigar box and it says house rent McCombs. So I think he was a landlord and all these, let me see, Nope, he had he was paying the rent. No. Received of Jacob Biles on rent of McCombs house. Yes. He he paid the rent. And then I have this also uh, receipt also from the First National Bank of Hazelton in 1944. It's Hazelton, Pennsylvania, which I think is in the Scranton area. I think I'll put two clips on just to protect this very fragile check. And you can do what you want to, or not check, but receipt. You can do what you want to with that receipt. Fold it up and put it in a pocket if you want to protect it better. <clears throat> We're going to have some fun on this side of the page, so I guess I better take these off for now. I'm going to take one of Lorna's digitals. So she makes those stamps, but she also has a ton of really cool digitals. So I'm going to take this, and this is from a set called French Roast, and I don't remember the rest of the rest of the name of it, but I printed I printed the whole thing the other day. And look at all those pages. You don't have to print them all, but they're really cool and I wanted to have them in my stash so they're ready to use. So you get whole pages, like a full design, like these. They're very subtle, some of them. Some of them are darker. And then there are some pages that have smaller pieces, like, like that. It's like in sections. And I had a lot of fun. I, I printed this before and I tore them up and made pockets out of them. So it's kind of what I'm doing here, but this, this piece lends itself to being torn up. It's just a really fun kit to play with. I want this edge to be flat, so I am going to trim that. Then, just 
tear it. this one for the other journal. Now I'm just going to ink this up a bit. And then just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to add a pretty vintage sticker. Make sure I just have one. I'm just going to add it down there just to add a little spot of color. And then I need to tuck something in there. So I will be tucking in a vintage or antique postcard. We're going to pick one out. And then I have a digital card that I want to add. I can't remember where I got the set, but I looked and kept looking at this digital and kept looking at it and kept looking at it for a long time and then I just decided to get it at. I think it was on sale. It was not an expensive set. And where are they? And they are here. So let's pick a postcard out first. I did put one of these kind of postcards on the inside of each cover. So this one that I'm working on now, this journal, has a 1910 postcard. It's actually a 1909 postcard because it has a 1910 calendar on it. Added a little lace and then I tucked in a letter from 1948 written in Dutch and it's on airmail paper. Very tiny writing. Look at that. So I was putting a scenic postcard in, but they're vintage and very pretty. This is Minnehaha, Minnehaha Falls from Watkins Glen, New York. No writing on the back. And this is the set I was talking about. It has the salt glaze pottery and some copper, but I really wanted it, which I like and I'll use. But I really wanted the set for the glassware, like that. I'll have to link this one below, too. Let's use this one. Aren't they so neat? They're just gorgeous. It reminds me so much of um, Rockwell Crafts. I don't know if you remember, but I did a, a design team project for her. Um, i trying to think what the name of her set was, but it did have a lot of glassware in it. And I had a lot of glassware postcards, and I had so many fun things to put in that journal. I Not too long ago, apparently I didn't cut this out straight, and it's bugging me. Not too long ago, I rewatched the video for that journal. And I thought, man, I really like that journal. Wish I'd kept it. <laughs> but it's a digital. I can make it again. I just don't have all those antique postcards. But I have these now.
It was Variations on a Theme. That was the name of that digital kit from Rockwell Creations. Still not cut straight, but that's okay. Sorry if that was noisy. And there. Very pretty pocket arrangement there. On this side, I'm going to add another piece of this. Oh, I'm going to put these back on before I forget. I'm going to have to find just the right size container or construct one to put this in so it stays wound. It would have to be just a really slender container and then I could use, use it like a tape dispenser. I'm going to have to make something like that because I don't want to you know, tape the end to itself. It'll just tear it every time. Okay. I'm just going to take a little strip. Oh, I've got glue on it. I must have glue on my table somewhere. Or maybe the bottle just dripped out right on this. Um, I'm just going to add this to it. after I got my package yesterday I came right in here and looked for some places to use this tape on the journal that I worked on yesterday and for here I'm I'm just going to add another little vintage card like a gift card colors are better with that one. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to glue it there and I'll put a paper clip to hold that closed but you can take the paper clip, clip off and open it up and write on it. I love these vintage gift cards. They're so little, like uh, the other ones that I used that were just little ones to write to and from on. And these little ones to open, I just love them. And they're not that easy to find. I get so excited when I find them and then I don't want to use them because what if I don't find any more? But I have them to be used, so I'm using them. On this side, I'm going to use um, something else that I got from Susie in that box of stuff that I got. If I can find it. I know I got it out. Where did I put it? When I was prepping for this video. Here it is. Uh, it is a set of this receipt for butter, eggs, and poultry from Boyertown, Pennsylvania. I don't know where Boyertown is, but I'm wondering if it is where Mallow Cups are manufactured because they were from the Boyer Company, the Boyer Candy Company. I like Mallow Cups. And I think maybe they also did do the Neko wafers. I wasn't a big fan of them, but I'm not sure what else. They used to do a pe their own peanut butter cup called Smoothies, and they were they were not as good as Reese's. I don't think they had chocolate on the outside. I'm not, I think it was, I don't know if it was a peanut butter candy. I'm not sure. 
what it was, but it wasn't dark like the Reese's Cups. Anyway, I'm wondering if that's where Mallow Cups were made. Because maybe it's maybe it's down near Hershey. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. And now I'm going to use another of the um, gift stickers. These were for whoops, tore it. These were for decorating gift packages. Just want a little put a little piece of paper behind it. something a little brighter. kind of regret coffee dyeing the papers that I used, although I did want them coffee dyed, but it just dulled down the pretty papers that I picked out, which is what coffee dyeing will do, you know, but so I'm trying to add some brightness with the ephemera pieces that I add. quite a lot on this. Maybe. I know this is antique, but it's already in bad shape and it's already torn. So, I think I'll reinforce these creases with that. just do one for now and maybe I'll go back and do more later Twenty dollars for that rent. Okay. So that page is complete. I have this pretty digital, and this is one of Lorna's digitals too. One of her wallpaper digitals. And I've already sewn a piece of sheer embroidered lace on it, and this piece of a really pretty trim. I do need to glue this rib, this lace to the ribbon. Okay. 
guess that end is okay. And I stenciled on the inside. And I don't think I need to do anything else. That page is done. You have a coffee dyed paper next. Now, I tried to stamp on this page on the, in the other journal, and because the copy dye paper is too crinkly, even though I ironed it, it didn't stamp clearly, so I didn't even bother trying. I stamped it on this green, which is, I did that with the other one too. I uh, corrected the poor stamping by stamping it on this green. And this is copy dyed also, but it's lighter weight and, and it allowed me to stamp it nice and clearly. So then I just tore it out and we'll just glue it on there. It adds another spot of color. This is just a piece of green printer paper. You can buy the packs that have pastel colors. So. That's what that is, green paper that I dyed. Now on the back I just added this little bit of pleated, pleated um, nylon trim or something. And now I'm going to take, what did I do with it? Here it is. Just this little strip. It's from Amity Bloom's Wallpaper Borders. I'm just going to cut a little piece, big enough to make a small pocket because I needed something small for the little tag, little cards that we made. Excuse my reach. There they are. Remember um, one of the videos recently I made these little cards. So I just wanted a little pocket big enough for one of these. And I'm going to put one of the Victorian calling cards in the pocket also. Again, I looked for something that had some, like, bright, and I'm not talking about neon bright like that. I'm talking about a little brightness to the doll page. And all those colors work nicely together, and then that page is done. No, I didn't do anything to that side. We have a book page. And on this, I just added this gorgeous piece. And I think that's all I did on the book page. Yep. We have a copy dyed page. Okay, so first I'm going to stamp. I'm gonna do the stamping before I add anything else because sometimes if you have something on one side and then try to stamp on the other it's a little tricky just looking for my little block this is uh, one of the numbers that came with the sand pool set one of them I got several sets Bought them for myself for Christmas. So I'm going to stamp that here. And then I did the same thing with another of her stamps. And that, that shoe that I used was also one of hers. So instead of stamping it on the paper, I'm going to... Well, I already did stamp it on the green paper and we'll just glue it down.
Here I'm going to add one of these vintage antique. I was looking at the date. I believe it's 1913. So I'm just going to wrap this around here. It's stamped on the back. I bought these at the flea market last year and it was a whole bundle. Well, it wasn't a huge bundle, but there were quite a few pieces and there were there were two different ones. Well, I've got the other one right here. But they were just all multiples of these and I think it was mostly this one. So I was just slightly disappointed that they were all the same, but not really, because I still got a good deal on a lot of antique ephemera pieces, so that was pretty good. I didn't mind. And then on the back, I'm going to add another one of these cards. Let's add a copper piece. That one's kind of cool, isn't it? Troy, New York. Pottery. And I'll ink around that. I'll just do it later. And then I think that is done. For this page, I added a piece of fabric with a piece of trim for the pocket. And I'm going to put in the tags that I got from Susie at, what did I say her shop was called? Creative Cafe Girl. And I put a little piece of washi on the back because this, the perforation wants to come right off. Wants to, as, as soon as you handle it, it's going to tear. And I wanted to keep it tall enough to go in there, so I added washi tape. And I used my um, Pioneer Woman washi tape. We're having a windy day today. My weather app shows wind blowing all day. So where it would show at each hour of the day where it would show sunshine or cloud or rain or snow or whatever, it shows a wind blowing, which means it's supposed to be a windy day all day today, which is fine. I like windy days but it's very cold and it's supposed to get down to zero tonight. It's in the single digits today here. So I'm staying in my house today, I think. Now that we're gonna have a little fun with this and it's going to in also include this page. I have these long digitals. These are not genuine. These are, some of these are printed from my own pieces. I don't think that one was, but these were things I made copies of my own things. So I want something that is long enough that I'll have to cut it and then continue it on that side, but I don't want it, to, I just want a little piece over here. even that's even a bigger piece than I wanted but maybe this one so I'll cut it right there and th this was something that came to me when I was making the other journal and I wanted to use a pink digital check that I had and I had to cut it to make a pocket, and then I just decided to add it, add the cut off piece to the other page.
I'm going to trim a little bit there just because I do want this to be smaller. Because I tucked something, I made it a pocket on this side and I tucked something in there. Okay. Oh dear, I'm almost out of time here. Well, I am out of time actually. I usually stop my videos at 44 or 45 minutes. down. And we did tags in one of the other, one of my earlier videos. And so one of these tags will go in this pocket. I'll put that one in there when the glue is dry. Gonna leave that end open. Just kind of want to make sure they kind of line up, line up the best I can do it. And then that will go into the journal like that. And I used a, I I tucked this little tag, one of the vintage gift tags in the other journal, but this is too deep for that. So I will find something to put in there. Something fun and hopefully vintage to tuck in there. I have little greeting cards that were actually gift enclosure cards that might work in there. I'll have to get them out. Sorry, my daughter's on her lunch break, apparently. <laughs> Oops. So I have to let that dry and then I'll tuck that in. Is that everything I was doing on this page? Oh, this is the one. Um, yes, I think so. Yes. We're almost done. So the last thing is this really fun envelope red turkey wheat flour and I got this from the same seller where I got these page papers that I was talking about I got a lot of cool stuff from him I got a whole a little packet of these so I don't know maybe eight of these envelopes but they're all just ripped off the top willy-nilly with no care for junk journalers in the future uh, I'm going to reinforce this with a strip of fabric just going to glue that to it and otherwise it's torn but it doesn't have any loose pieces so I can leave it the way it is and it'll go in the center of the book so I will glue this to it and then um, I'll check to make sure I covered everything in that book got everything done but I think we're just about done and that just needs to be sewn together and I just have to do all the same stuff for the, the third journal so thanks for hanging out with me. I know it went over a little bit, but the camera didn't shut off, so we're all good. I will see you in the next video, and hopefully the next video will be a flip through of these journals. Thanks for watching. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.